Okay, and here we are, hour number two. Dr. Bill Deagle joins us this hour. There's an awful lot going on, as always. We'll do as much as we can to bring you up to speed on a number of different topics and subjects. Hello, Bill. Welcome back. Lots of uh, issues to cover. Uh, we did a major update today with our nuclear uh, safety expert from the NRC. His radio name is Chris Harris. Mm-hmm. And um, we have a, couple, a number of issues that I want to kind of focus on because I think we've got a lot to cover today, including what's going on in Ukraine with the so-called peace pact, and et cetera. Yeah, let me let uh, me the, do one thing first here. This is something that is really not making the news at all, and that's the whip problem in New Mexico. Yeah, that's the third item on, our, on my number three list. Okay, very good. We'll, we'll all hold on, and we'll do that later then. Go right ahead. Okay, okay the first one is that uh, uh, the liquid uh, processing system is allowing water to go into the unintended areas. They had a major release here in the last couple of days that made an area that wasn't radioactive highly radioactive. In Fukushima at Daiichi. And Fukushima, and also yeah. one of their plastic tanks ruptured. Yeah. Uh, also releasing highly contaminated water over the weekend. Yep. Uh we can get into more specifics, but what happens is they're not doing any, uh, there's a, a couple of deficiencies that I want to point out that'll be in this article that I've been working on upgrading. I'm going to make a summarized version that I'll, I'll give you to post up on your site and I'll have in mine. And then I'm going to have an expanded version with lots of references that'll be a couple hundred pages that will be an ebook. So people can really dive into this. Right. And we're going to Jesus. cover everything from <clears throat> engineering to metallurgy to uh, what's going on. There's several things. Firstly, when you have a plant, whether it's a heavy water plant or a gas plant, uh-huh. you have to test every weld with X-rays and ultrasound. Jeez, and we you're have supposed to, occurring. <laughs> right? And we have a subsidence. And I asked uh, Chris if they'd done any modeling or data on the subsidence or the welds or anything else structurally that has been disrupted either by the earthquake or by the neutron annealing caused by this material or the swar- swarm of plasma occurring. Because if you actually could visualize it. You see, literally, like eddy currents of of electrons swirling around like dust devils all around the plant. Besides okay. the radiation, the neutron flux, and everything. When you talk about subsidence, uh, you're talking about the physical subsidence of the structures of the plant, remaining. Yeah. If you had, took an inclinometer on it, you see it's a good, listing so many degrees. Well, we know at 31 yeah. inches at least at uh, reactor building four. So right. The key, the key is if you did an X-ray <clears throat> of every one of the key, we call weak point joints, mm-hmm. rivets, etc., and you could have done that you would be able to calculate oh, which is going to blow first and what are the consequences of that. And it could be like a set of dominoes. <clears throat> so that's important. Number two, they've done, there's no data that they've done anything like that. The next thing is they did not review the dangers of an increased earthquake and how structurally this plant can actually hold together even with a very low-level earthquake. Mm-hmm. Just like we're doing the NRC, there are 60 seismic studies that are being released right. in the next 30 days from the NRC. And, of course, particularly looking at the New Madrid Fault and other sites like the um, Diablo Canyon in Northern California and other areas where they're highly, you know, op- literally half of our reactors are within strike distance of, of a fault zone. Half. Mm. Um, and that's not good. No. Now, the third area, and, of course, that NRC report's coming up. We don't have a full analysis yet. What we talked about today... Do you, do you think the NRC is going to, for once, be really honest about things? In well, it's going to be really hard to spin it because it was originally put forward by Jazco, and the raw data is coming out whether they like it or not. Okay. And and, it, and the issue is they, they're going to try to say, well, we can tolerate that level of earthquake. You know, oh, please. let's say before it was rated to be able to tolerate a 6.4, mm-hmm. what we're going to find is the plants are going to find that they can't tolerate a 4.3. Mm-hmm. And when that happens, it means a lot of reactors, <laughs> they're going to have to go into shutdown phase which means they're going to go from being a, a live nuclear reactor to one and shut down. They still don't mean they're safe, just like the one at San Onofre that's 12 miles from here. That's not really safe. It just means that it's basically in cold shutdown, so it's still circulating water. Mm-hmm. It's still mm-hmm. probably venting off some tritium, and they have all these casks around, and, all, and the cooling pool is still operational. So all that material over you know 50-plus years is sitting there waiting to get an accident, <clears throat> where there can be the... San Jacinta upthrust zone, which is only six miles off the coast toward Cantalita Island, mm-hmm. or it's, um, you know, it's some other stupid accident that happens. But it's my guess that if they actually reviewed honestly, most of the reactors in America uh, are in danger of losing integrity of the plant physical structure uh, if even a moderate level earthquake, let's say a level five or six, happens here in America. Yeah, I believe and most it. Of them are and most of them along the New Madrid system, there's 25 reactor sites mm-hmm. that have Mark 1 and boiling water reactors like the 
Yeah, same as Fukushima Daiichi. Same junk. Same, Fukushima, they also have, same five uh, stories off the ground, a spent fuel pool, hanging yeah. out there, just waiting to dive to the ground. This is right. The only thing they did different was they put concrete domes over the reactor. That's number one. And number two, they didn't do what's called a faux hydrogen uh, collection system. They actually made a real one. The problem is that when you, I don't think they do proper what's called maintenance testing, where they test the thickness of the pipes, whether or not they, there's any crystal structure change or lack of integrity of wells. <clears throat> when you don't do that, if you have a gas plant or a pulp and paper mill or a heavy water nuclear plant, you get an accident, you get a blow, you get a release. I can't even imagine them doing such. Right. <laughs> so and then we get into the wet plant, and we're just getting into this. We'll have a much bigger report next week, but there's a 187-page report, and I have the link. Uh, we'll have a report probably in a couple of days uh, to early next week. Uh, what's happened out of 1,533 uh, transfer assemblies, these fuel rod assemblies that were in the cooling pool, they removed uh, 638, 616 are total assemblies mm -hmm. that were spent fuel, and the unirradiated fuel rod assemblies, they removed only 22 of those out of the 202. And the times of times they've actually done... Those are the brand new acid. ones. Yeah, brand new ones. And, and those are, the, are those mocks? Uh the, uh, the, 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 well, those are unirradiated. The, the spent fuel tends to have higher plutonium in it. Okay. The unirradiated are not. They're not MOX. But the other news is that they, <clears throat> apparently the Japanese are opening up a MOX reactor south of Tokyo on the coast. They're insane. And the only reason we have a MOX reactor uh, is to create plutonium for nuclear weapons. Of course. And so the Japanese are tooling up for Third World War. And, of course, that's what was going on in Fukushima because they had that MOX reactor, which is Reactor 3, uh, some people say, like Senator Graham was doing this down at the uh, nuclear reactor where I actually, it turns out, I actually took care of employees working on it uh, in uh, Savannah, Georgia, because it was very close to us. We were the, lo lo the local hazmat um, facility, the Augusta Regional Trauma Center, and I worked in the emergency trauma unit, burn unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were told, you know, where our hazmat suits are and all our procedures and so on, and don't talk to the media in the usual garbage. But they had a major release the year before I arrived there in 1987, and the release was so radioactive, when it fell on the cars, they actually had to dig a hole in the parking lot and drop them all in, and they couldn't even move them. Wow. So most people don't realize these plants are having accidents all the time, and they're covering them up. I and believe you. I, I have no doubt. None. Now, their idea was to switch to make this a MOX reactor plant and make MOX fuel rods because the reactor generates more electricity, but they're very touchy. In other words, it can it can go into what's called overdrive I believe and it. go critical, I, hypercritical, I, and yes, explode. We've talked about this before. Right. Very so, touchy is a good way yeah, to phrase touchy it. Touchy is a good word. And the problem is that these reactors, if you lose the if you lose the backup power, you don't have hours, you have minutes before the thing blows. Wow. That I didn't you have know. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah, this is very, very bad. And and you know, here here's another thing. How often are our nuclear power plants actually switching over to backup power. There ought to be a backup to the backup to make sure the backup power is fully functional and there to do the job if needed. They don't do it. They don't, they don't have do the routine. testing. No. Actually, they don't even test necessarily once a year these diesel generators. My my wife's father was a real smart guy. He was a, a diesel generator operator for the dew line for the, for the uh, incoming nuclear missiles that would be in Nova Scotia, in Cape Breton, mm -hmm. Nova Scotia. Mm-hmm. And uh, he told me he was doing tests every week. And wouldn't it be that 50% of the time, and he was a very good engineer, these diesel generators wouldn't go. And when the sucker wouldn't go, you'd be working up all night trying to get the damn thing working. Because if you, one generator didn't go, yeah. and you had an incoming missile system coming over Labrador and Greenland, and you didn't have your dew line, reactor, your dew line radar set up to pick up the incoming nuclear, you couldn't do launch on command. So, they, they, Bill, they ought to be testing these full on every month, right? Once a month. This is the, the stakes are too them, high. They were testing them at Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, once a week. These guys in America at these nuclear reactors are not testing them once a year. That's my point. This should be done monthly, and they should be forced to go weekly, on weekly. to the the they're actual doing a backup. Dry run of these reactor of these diesel generators, thousand twenty four horsepower, every week. It shows you how slack these guys are. They're out to slack. Lunch. Oh. Falling asleep on the job, uh, smoking dope on the job, doing drugs on the job. How many of them are on antidepressants on the job? Oh man, it's it's so bad. We're uh, well, I can't they need believe to have, it. Uh, they need to have proper it. management systems and 
you know, it's like putting our troops in too many depressing positions or, or over uh, deploying them in a, in a, in a war. Correct. Yeah. Same yeah. kind of thing. Yep, exactly. All right, stand by. We'll be right back with Bill as we continue. Okay, let's get right back to it. Dr. Bill Deagle is here bringing you the latest. All right, Bill, go ahead. Yeah, so um, to summarize what's happening is uh, neither are they doing structural testing to see if they can withstand an earthquake. We know historically when you have a big earthquake like the one off Chile that you're going to have a follow-up earthquake. It can be a, a foreshock mm-hmm. of a bigger quake or an aftershock. Mm-hmm. Right. Last uh, time that this happened, a year later, uh, um, to the month, and I think almost to the week, that subduction fault line zone about 75 miles east of Fukushima blew and resulted in a tsunami and earthquake that, that not only uh, swamped Fukushima because they cut the bluff down, the natural bluff would have prevented it, but also damaged uh, five other reactor sites. Like, oh, I had 440 gallons of highly radioactive water that leaked because of the earthquake that's on the other side of Honshu. Mm-hmm. So um, it's my my prediction that we're going to have a major quake that's going to exceed the structural integrity of the plant. Uh, right now, the uh, baling wire and chewing gum system they've used to hold these Don't containers the together is going to work. Duct tape. Yeah, duct tape. Uh, and I've gone over specific structural things that they could do. The first thing they need to do is have a liner with a seawall and not uh, – this is the first step – and put up a seawall, which they could put up pretty quickly, and then have that – in a sense, a, a zone of water with this liner where they can actually pump out that water and filter it. The, um, you know, the filtration system they use is ridiculous because they could filter out these radioisotopes and create highly radioactive uh, filtration material that they could then put in containers and then properly dispose of it. So they're dump, not dumping millions of gallons, millions well, of the, tons the, of water. The, that's the ALP system, but the ALP system is shut down now. They've kind of given up. Well, on I, it. I think they need to rethink how they do the ALP system because. Whatever they're doing, it's like, you know, if, you know, the, the, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing and yeah. expecting a different outcome. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's true. Yeah. That's or or you do. might call it just as, as Forrest Gump said, the definition of stupid. Stupid is as stupid does. And, you know, uh, I don't think Forrest was stupid. He was just slow. There's a big difference. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, the second thing is that, um, that the Japanese are obviously on a track to reactivate these reactors, uh, not only in the fault line zone, but also not the Japanese think, people. We got to make that clear. It's the it's the uh, Shinzo Abe, yeah. Uh, yeah. maniacal, war oriented, land of the rising sun, crazy fanatic government there that wants this. Yeah, these people are obviously uh, under some kind of occultic. Uh, Avatar craziness because I don't know. Yeah, we know that that uh, that Abe and several other members of the senior corporate and the political party he's involved with are members of the Um Shinrikyo death cult. And they were. Anyway. Now, people might think this is a current phenomenon, but you got to understand that the shoguns and the people that are involved in uh, ruling Japan for thousands of years, some of the top levels of the of the uh, of these high levels of the dark arts. They call them martial arts, but they were. You have to understand, these people were wizards and warlocks. They, they, they used occult technology to do superhuman things. Um, I remember talking once to one of my uh, chemistry colleagues. This is back uh, almost 40 years ago. And he was probably about maybe 5'3", on a good day, from Japan. And he was a, uh, uh, I think at that time he was working on his master's degrees in chemistry and he was going to get his Ph.D., but he was actually a member of one of these uh, martial arts, and he was a black le- black belt level. And several of the guys were teasing him, trying to ask him what he could do, you know, because some of these martial artists can do some pretty supernatural things. And he said, I can drive my finger straight into solid granite or rock or whatever and then climb a wall. And he could jump straight up. So they wanted to demonstrate what he could do, and he could actually jump straight up mm. without bending his knees. Hmm. And touched the basket of a basketball hoop right in our university, Dalhousie. That's ten with feet. With his toes from above. That's ten feet tall. Right. And you now we know that the senior people that are really good in the NBA can uh, national basketball can go about sure. three feet. And there's one guy in the uh, NFL that can go, I think, forty inches. Uh, so some of the vertical height experts are, you know, forty inches, forty-five inches. That's really superhuman. Yeah. He did ten feet. Um, Is this on video? Yeah. Uh, I talked to the guys that were there. They were just their jaw dropped when they saw him do this. Mm-hmm. 
So <clears throat> one night he was out, actually, and there were a bunch of people taunting him, and he decided to try to beat him up. And he put all three of the men who were well over six foot into the intensive care unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you have to understand that there are things going on, and these people are using what I call it, without getting into all the details, they're using the dark arts. The Japanese, they're at the senior level of, of the Japanese nobility that are descended from these shoguns that really think that when they bring forth the destructive force of the dragon, because if you actually listen to the mythology of the Japanese, they think that the entire island of islands of Japan that make this long, slithering move toward in the Pacific Ocean, near the deepest trench on Earth, they think someday this dragon is going to dive back into the ocean. And uh, when they bring forth destruction, by bringing forth this dragon spirit, that is going to make Japan rise to be the prescient power on Earth. Well, we get that old flag out again, right? Yeah, and, and, and people think, well, where does this craziness come from? It's not <laughs> just a recent phenomenon. This mm -hmm. is very ancient. Um, so I think it's actually just rearing its ugly head again, and it's doing it in the, in the, in the visage of a you know a crazy you know Abe and other leaders in these corporations. Not just uh, in the government; it's in these corporations too. So they truly have a fusion of a death cult with being corporations in in some of the most intelligent people on earth in terms of technicality. I mean, the Japanese are not stupid; they're some of the most intelligent people. But yet, on the one hand, we have these death cult people; on the other we have people returning to their homes to die. And the government literally cut their benefits. So uh, the normal rational person looks at this and says, is this group psychopathy? Are they just, you know, massively suicidal? Yeah. And then, of course, next month we have the movie coming out, Godzilla, which I honestly think Godzilla and all this mythology came up out of this ancient cult about the rise of this giant monster and about, uh, you know, the return of Japan under the waves of the ocean. Uh, and, of course, one of the dialogue points in the movie on the, on the preview was that the new, exploding of nuclear bombs was trying to, quote, kill it. Um, what I think the Japanese are doing is they're getting ready for World War III and for a great war with China. Oh, yeah. and, uh, I'm not going to argue. Sure, obviously yeah, they're preparing they're getting for ready. it. I, I, I think it... this is really insane because the, the Chinese have built an amazing amount of new nuclear reactors, and they're building, still despite Fukushima, and even with 22 provinces of, of China within six weeks showing radioactivity six times normal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Air... Say that again. Most people don't realize that the cyclonic currents carry radioactivity over China as well as... Of course it does. Depends so on Asia. The... The, clockwise or counterclockwise. Kind of Whatever the weather system yeah. is, it'll, it'll carry it. Sure. Right. So what happens is that 22 provinces within uh, three to six weeks showed six times at peak normal levels of ambient airborne radiation. This back at 311? Yeah, okay. within six weeks. Yeah, well, we got th three days. We had plutonium measured in New Mexico from Fukushima. Three right, days. Right. Three days. Now, <clears throat> what happens is all radioactivity, doesn't matter if it's cosmic rays, X-rays, uh, you know, beta particle, or whatever, they strip electrons from tissues. When they do this, they create a, a potential change in the tissue. Mm -hmm. Sets up an electron flow toward the areas where there's more or, or more electrons toward the area with less, and that mm -hmm. creates circuits that maintain or activate disease states, mm -hmm. and disturb behavior, yep. and start to degrade the epigenetics of the individual or any life. Form. Well, we're already in severe decline as it is uh, with yeah, all these other things. This is just going to speed that process of wow. the devolution of life on Earth. Yep. Hold on a second. We'll come right back, and when we do, I'll play you a little bit of the. Godzilla 2014, the main trailer, the official trailer from the new Godzilla movie. Uh, timing, interesting. Already 21 and a half million people have looked at this, this trailer, Bill. It's going to be a big blockbuster. Hold on, we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, and we are back. The trailer, the official trailer for Godzilla 2014. Here's a little bit of it for you. <coughs> That's not part of the trailer. That's Dr. Bill coughing. Are you all right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm fine. Just, I just need my water. I, I think that the uh, Godzilla doesn't have a cough. I think he just has fire. It was the old story, anyway. 
Here we go. I want to talk to somebody in charge. You are not fooling anybody when you say that what happened was a natural disaster. You're lying. It was not an earthquake. It wasn't a typhoon. Because what's really happening is that you're hiding something out there. And it is going to send us back to the Stone Age. In 1954, we awakened something. Well, there's nuclear tests in the Pacific. Not tests. They were trying to kill it. You have no idea what's coming. Don't forget, the tests in 1954 were trying to kill it. They weren't tests at all. Sounds like a good one, Bill. Yeah, it sounds like they're um, implanting some, uh, what I call some, some programming. So people, they're programming us. Yeah, they're programming us for... Uh, they yeah, always telegraph. They telegraph so many things through the media. Yeah, they do. I think... One of the things we talked about briefly before was the holographic universe. Uh, and that there, you know, if you start to understand the structure of the universe, you understand the masters of the, uh, that are trying to steer reality. That's why the media is such a big investment for the globalists. That's why they're so, it's so important for them to tell us what they're going to do. Uh, it's part of a, if you want to call it, hyperdimensional ceremony, if you want to call it, to advise us or tell us at least part, even if it's kind of, uh, shaded and colored and and uh kind of almost like uh disguised so it's very telling that three years after fukushima we have the godzilla movie coming out when really most people in northern japan are already dying where if there's a major radiation release within five years the dying in japan <clears throat> will be followed by the dying in america and the northern hemisphere uh People don't realize that this one incident alone, even though a Middle Eastern or an India-Pakistani war, may be sufficient to completely make it impossible to have normal wild, and I use the term wild, reproduction. That to have a normal child, you have to submit your gametes to a laboratory to make sure they do polar body exclusion of any genetically malformed or just, just genetically disturbed fetus that can't see the light of day. And people think I'm exaggerating when I say that, and I'm not. I have an incredible amount of experience and knowledge and classified information that know exactly what this will do to the human race. And people need to take it a lot more seriously. In fact, it's a far more dangerous and far more insidious than Godzilla. Well, it, no arguments here. Yeah, it's bad. I know, I know what's coming. Uh, I have an idea. I don't know the names of the technology, but I have an idea of how... We have an intuitive it knowledge because we're all connected. It's and, it's it's so far ahead of where anybody, most anybody, will ever be able to understand. They they have <laughs> they have toys that are so deadly 
anytime they want they can take as many people out as they'd like it, it's it's crazy well they can't do it they can't do it willy-nilly because there's opposing forces I, I, and, I couldn't agree more this, but that's what they think a, and that's what they think they well they've got that in their inventory but they're going to have problems employing it but they could try to do it at any time but they may try just like uh, a number of times the nuclear war has been stopped by forces that are otherworldly and we talked about this. Oh, before. I love the story about how they went over the the Soviet ICBM base and started the countdown for the rockets. Yeah, and yeah, that's uh, funny. They, the crews that would have taught them a lesson. Yeah, the crews underground were running around apparently just crazy, yelling, screaming, yelling. They couldn't do anything. They had no control right. over their missiles whatsoever, and they could just sit there and watch the electronic digital ticker move down toward launch. And right before launch, the UFOs above, which were causing it. Stopped it, and then left. Is it, they're trying to tell us something. <laughs> uh, I, I know exactly what they're trying to tell us. They're trying to tell us we are in the we are in the Colosseum of Earth, the prison planet. Yeah. And uh, in the in the in the main box seats are beings from other worlds that are surrounding us by the 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 incountable numbers of advanced civilizations, deciding whether we're thumbs up or thumbs down in the Circus Maximus of our local cosmos. And uh, there are positive and negative forces here. Uh, some people may talk to them and, and think that they're just uh, in your mind or in a different dimension. They're angels or devils. Uh, they also can manifest in the physical level, but they have levels of technology and spiritual technology that's far beyond what we think. Because we don't understand that we are in a granular, hyperdimensional matrix. We are in a hologram. Not a very pretty one either. Stand by. We'll be right it back. Can, parts are pretty and parts are pretty ugly. But it yeah. all fits the pretty model. Pretty good, pretty ugly. That's pretty good. <laughs> be back in a minute. Okay. Most of you have heard me refer to WIP on the program before. Nobody can remember what the letters stand for, Bill. It's a, <laughs> it's a deliberately convoluted, forgettable title. To right. a deadly project, WIP, W-I-P-P. What does it mean? Waste Isolation Pilot Plant. Now, this is intentional in my view. It's just dumb. And yeah, they did it on purpose. Use, use obtuse words that doesn't stick in your mind like Velcro. Nothing does. Now, now the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, I'll give you 30 seconds. Can you pull it up? Hard to do. WIP. Well, All right, so we call it whip. Pilot, you can throw it because why is something a pilot? It's like a test. Correct. This is not a test. This is where all the waste from all of the That's right. nuclear it's, weapons goes to be deposed. This is high-grade plutonium. Is, right. Now, why would they put that anywhere in licensed hydrofracking when you're putting all kinds of toxic chemicals and water down that could literally dissolve the floor? 100 the gas dissolve. and oil wells within a mile of the uh, quarter-mile underground facility. And right. just asking, begging for a catastrophe, and they've got one. Here's uh, what right. Senator uh, Tom Udall of New Mexico said. He says, uh, I appreciate that many of your uh, notes in your agency have made it clear that the radioactive releases from WIP have been at levels that are at a public health danger. And I'm hopeful that you, our monitoring and verification, will continue to support their unfortunately, he's <coughs> garbling his words here, the facts are that two accidents have happened to WIP that were not supposed to happen. A fire in a mine and a radiological release. DOE oversight has already been found to be lacking, and that's why it's important to the community that an independent public health agency like the EPA, oh, we trust the EPA, do we, Senator Udall? Not me. Be on the no. ground overseeing the recovery phase. See, there we are again, the recovery phase. There is no recovery phase. They can't even go down there. It's so well, damn dangerous. Recovery, you have to have containment. You have to have it. They got nothing. They don't have containment or cessation. How about a cessation phase? Listen to the lie from the EPA, Gina McCarthy. These, these horrors, they nonstop. <coughs> EPA's main job in this is to ensure that we're looking at any level that could have been exceeded, could have been exceeded in terms of protectiveness to the outside so that the surrounding communities are aware of any concerns. So far, it looks like any release has been far below any levels that are necessary for protection. We know people have concerns. This is a big deal. Right, what, See, these, is that? what a they statement was that? I'll tell you what it is. 
It's I like know what here, it is. Same thing. I'll translate it into something medical. We have a patient that already, their body temperature has now dropped 82 degrees because they're dead. And you're walking and talking around with the other doctors and you say, no, this patient came in really healthy this morning and we had all these different problems and we want to protect their pulse and their blood pressure and their <laughs> respiration. So we did yeah. A, B, and C. Yeah. And as far as we can see, we did all the protective measures necessary so the patient should be fine to be discharged tomorrow. It's true. It's this is the analogy. kind of craziness because... Yeah. What she's trying to do is all she wants to do is bring in doubt. If she can bring in doubt, then they've accomplished it because you get what's called a cognitive dissonance. Right. The brain repulses from the idea of all this radiation being released, especially if it's in your community or water table. And <clears throat> then your response is, just like all this hydrofracking generates this highly radioactive uh, uh, radon. Uh, oil well drilling uh, generates radioactive yeah, radon, waste. Radon generated silt, and this silt is not being properly disposed of by any of these. Never. It's sitting all over the country. Sitting all over the place, just outside in bags. But what she's trying to say is, well, we have enough doubts that we want you to doubt it, and don't worry, go back to sleep. Don't, don't worry, worry about happy. the fact that we have radiation levels high enough that we know that we release major isotopes like americium, plutonium, etc., their byproducts They've already waste. hospitalized wow. almost 20 people, I think, down there, maybe more. It went into right. the city of Carlsbad. There are alpha emitters there that will be there forever, and the people right. in that community now should get the hell out. That's the bottom line. But they're not well, going to let same, that happen. Same thing in Fukushima. Reagan. I mean, now the Reagan is going to, they're talking about sinking it, and you were the one, the first one to call that, uh, Thank Jeff. you. Thank you. And and we have the situation where we have dozens, perhaps, in, eventually most of the crew is going to end up with serious premature illness. Correct. And I'm not just talking about cancer. Everybody thinks of cancer. When no, 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 no. There's a whole bag full of stuff. Dementia, vascular disease, yeah. multi-system organ failure. Everything you can imagine medically can happen to these people. You, you know, th illness. Bill, th thank you for mentioning that. I don't, I, look, I'm not in here for credit. But I, when that happened, and when we became aware of what happened, that the Reagan sailed through these plumes, I said, that ship is lost. It might as well have sunk. It's well, over. And by the way, that's the most modern nuclear supercarrier yeah. ever made. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and we're talking about multi-billions of dollars. They spend more billions trying to fix the damn thing. Yeah, 18 um, months in Seattle. Right. No, right. it's, it's finished. It's lost. The, the ship is dead. It's done. Right. It also shows a couple other things. It shows that, you know, it's like when we have the integration of uh, this, this pact that was made between Russia and Ukraine. But the fact is the world economy is so integrated now that war is completely obsolete. And we also also understand that if you just look at the a war game model of, say, Israel attacking Iran and hitting the Bashir reactor, the amount of radiation release is going to sweep across Myanmar, China, yeah. and a the Asian countries and then America, that it's like, how can I say it? It's like exploding a bomb that releases radioactive or nuclear or nerve gas it's going to blow back on you and your family, and you're all going to be dead in 20 minutes, 20 minutes after the people you just killed with the bomb. So it's insanity. So in other words, modern warfare as it is, is completely obsolete, and anybody even considering it as an option to even posture is crazy. Totally. Yep. And, of course, the same way with these old-style nuclear reactors. I mean, we have a number of technologies. We have nuclear cold fusion that was developed. We by have ADF. so it's, much out there that doesn't. They yeah, can burn coal completely vacuum. clean. Every yeah. single nuclear plant should be shut down yesterday. That's well, that's it. One of the technologies I heard of was what's called chloroplast uh, uh, engineering. And what they do is, you, when you have a chloroplast, which has been around for three billion years, it's the basis of life on Earth. It converts sunlight to sugar. But you can change the genetics, so instead of making sunlight to sugar, it makes sunlight to hydrogen. Hmm. And you just have a hydrogen collector, mm -hmm. and you have a hydrogen-absorbing fuel cell, so you basically have solar to hydrogen, mm -hmm. and everything's running hydrogen. You can have hydrogen gas stations, hydrogen uh, adsorbed fuel cell, so you yeah. can hit it with a bullet, it doesn't blow up. Yeah. And, and there's no, if you're worried about the carbon-oxygen cycle, any carbon dioxide would just be converted to oxygen. Right now, because we're poisoning the oceans, we're chopped down the forests. We are dis we are significantly harming the peak capacity of the Earth to convert carbon dioxide to oxygen. Now, I don't consider CO two the death gas from hell. Of course, but it's if not. If you harm that cycle, the whole oxygen level starts to drop worldwide, and you can't be able to keep on building a an economy based on either 
old style nuclear technology or uh, we so called, they call it fossil fuels, which is ridiculous because it's all from abiotic fuel created by well, the nuclear uh, <laughs> reactor called the word Earth. fossil fuel, uh, the term, the word fossil is one of the great uh, deceptions of our time. Right. And they know the difference. The gold theory was proven. In fact, I talked to my friend, uh, Connie Musso and her husband, both oil engineers. He works as actually Lloyd's London engineer in Afghanistan. And they told me that the Russians know about the gold theory. They just decided to say, to heck with you Westerners. We're just going to do deep well drilling at thirty five to 45,000 feet. And that's why they're the number one oil gas producers on the planet. The Russians just said, to heck with you guys hiding this. And the American oil industry knew this 60 years ago. This is not new stuff. Uh, same way with energy from a vacuum. If you actually just go out in space, you can put a space ladder, just a ladder, up a you know carbon fiber ladder out in space, uh -huh. and just pipe the energy down from the from the plasma of the solar system right to Earth. That's all you need. That's you can do all kinds of technology. Uh -huh. There, there's one of the best ones I think is having an array of these chloroplast cells generating hydrogen. And every home has basically a chloroplast cell generating hydrogen. It yeah. stores in the tank. It goes in your car. Hydrogen. It goes in your home for fuel and cooking and eat and heating. Uh, it, it drives all the the engines of everything. I I don't think I think we have to we don't have to talk about it's called carbon neutral number one, but we have to realize we can't create electro pollution, <clears throat> solar powered uh, arrays cause tremendous electro pollution. Um, wind generates an amazing dirty electricity electro pollution. Nuclear is extremely unsafe. They all vent off tritium, thorium, and other isotopes. They all need backup power, which is very unreliable. They all generate waste after 50 years of use that's going to be around for hundreds of millions of years. Uh, and, and all of this is because the real currency of the planet is energy. And we have limitless energy. It's like having limitless credit. But the globalists don't want that. They don't want to have people have access to all the known information in the world or science. They don't want them to have access to the truth. They don't want them to have access to limitless energy because then even third world countries could make anything because they're not dependent on banks, which are basically trying to loan pieces of paper because real the real currency of, if you want to call it money, is energy, period. And that's it. That's it. Really, it. It's really simple. I mean, you can try to make economies other things, but... The, the two main currencies of, of, of the economy should be energy and information. Energy and information. Everything else is well, a proxy system. You're right. Information, of course, is the Internet, and the Internet is ruled by God, otherwise known as Google, and all of its tentacles, otherwise known as Facebook, Alexa.com, the so-called site rating services. It is all controlled, every bit of it. Jeff, have you heard of the deep Internet? The deep internet. Yes, I've heard of it. I couldn't, I, nothing to say about it, but I've heard of it. Well, I haven't uh, <clears throat> gone into it, but I've talked to some experts recently. And the deep internet has a data flow, about 98% of the total data going through the internet is going in the deep internet. It does everything from selling drugs to prostitution to international smuggling to all kinds of bad stuff. And uh, people need to realize that uh, we now have limitless information available, a lot of it very bad. And that's why it's so infiltrated in the so-called even alternative media. Uh, you know, uh, people have tried to stimulate panic, make people feel oppressed and, and frightful. Oh, and they do so a good, good job of it too. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 they and they're constantly massaging, telling people to be afraid, be very afraid. When I tell people be informed, be very informed, and the tagline of my show is to ask better questions. Well, Stop I hope. Be fearful. Just yeah. ask better questions. I hope Godzilla wins this time. All right. Yeah, yeah, I hope he wins. I hope what he does is he tears down all the nuclear reactors and throws them deep into the, the trench of the Pacific I Ocean. I hope he eats them and processes them eats and it. turns them into uh, harmless offal. Okay. <laughs> That'd thank, be funny. Th <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bill, as always. Talk yeah, to you next week. A humor will help uh, make the reality go down because it's pretty crazy. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Take hey, care. Uh, Mr. Putin, by the way, should... Get another Nobel Prize for stopping at another attempt at World War III by this pact that he did. Uh, amen to that. Uh, Johnny Depp's movie out this weekend, I believe, and that's something you want to watch <laughs> because remember, they tell us in advance. This is yeah, going to be another Transcendence is uh, what their goal is for the 
transhumanists and the global elite. They want to transcend humanity. They may be already there. We don't know. All right. Talk to you soon. Be well. Take care, everybody. Take action and ask better questions. Okay. Thanks, Phil.